Commerce. Thank you so much for joining us for this month's Strategies for Success. Um, Strategies for Success takes place the second Thursday of every month from 12 to 1. Feel free to um, have your lunch at your desk while we learn about our current topic, which is business recycling, um, better for a stronger community. And here to present is Tanara Hall from Ocean County Department of Solid Waste Management. Tanara. Well, good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, we're the Ocean County Department of Solid Waste Management. And well, I'm happy to be here. And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we'll get to that um, during or after the presentation. Okay, Tanara, do you want to start? Oh, I, I oh, thought you had some business to do before. No, that's no, why no, I'm no, no. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. That's okay. That's okay. All right. Um, well, hopefully, if I'm, you know, if I'm taking too long, um, you guys can let me know, and I'll try to speed up. Um, there's a lot of information, and I just want to make sure that you get as much as you can without overwhelming you. Um, so, just why should you recycle? In New Jersey, recycling is the law, is mandatory. And actually New Jersey was one of the first states that made recycling a law, which is great. Uh, we were ahead of times back in 1987. Um, so recycling is very important for many reasons. And one of them is um, also avoiding fines. You don't wanna get that inspector um, giving you a ticket for not complying with the law. Uh, for the economy, Recycling is very important because it's going to help you save dumpster space. It's going to attract customers that are into uh, sustainability and recycling. It's going to save you taxes because every time that you recycle, um, that material is sold in, you know, in the best case scenario, we make money. Uh, so towns don't have to pay for recycling, but they do have to pay for tipping fees on the landfill. So if you send garbage to the landfill, that's going to come out of your taxes. You have to pay for that. Um, recycling also supports American manufacturing and creates jobs in now more than ever, which is great. It's also great for the environment because it helps prevent pollution. It saves energy because recycled materials um, are better to uh, generate new materials. They require less water and energy. So it saves energy that way too. And it saves landfill space. Uh, Ocean County has one landfill, and that's the last landfill we will ever have. Um, it's supposed to be completely done by 2038, and after that, we're going to have to find a new place to send our uh, garbage to be disposed of. Uh, there are no there are no more spaces in Ocean County to build a new landfill, so this is this is it. And what happens when we have to send the garbage far away, that's just going to be more expensive and that's going to affect our taxes too. So we want to make sure we can preserve the space in the landfill as much as we can and may, maybe make it last longer so we can delay that um, situation as much as possible. And it's also important for social responsibility because everybody should take responsibility of what they generate. Right. Every time you buy something, this has to go somewhere and you should be aware of that. Uh, also, you can be part of a sustainable community. Uh, there are many programs that reward the towns and the community and the businesses for doing little efforts. And it's nice to know that everybody in your community cares and wants to do something better for the world. Uh, you can also help your town get community grants and you set the right image to your customers, letting them know that you also worry about the same things they worry about. Um, one thing is we, we always put our garbage outside of our homes and businesses, but we don't think where does it go? It doesn't really disappear. Uh, it's not magic, it's a lot of work behind that. So they go to landfills on uh, the base case scenario uh, they go to incinerators. In the worst case scenario, they go to the environment. We can uh, see that many oceans are contaminated. Uh, the oceans are contaminated with a lot of plastic. 
nowadays. Uh, and this is for many reasons, just illegal dumping or uh, things that just get out of our cans and just fly away and make their way into the waterway. But um, doesn't matter where it goes, it never goes away. So one of the pictures uh, is the top view of a landfill. Oh, and this is my coworker, Sandra. She's gonna also be part of the presentation. Hi. Um, and the second picture is just another picture of a landfill. And landfills, um, never, you're never gonna get rid of that waste. It's just gonna be buried and it's gonna create a mountain of garbage that is gonna stay there forever. So it's not something beautiful and that land cannot be used after. And so many other things happen there. Um, the generation of um, gases like methane are harmful for the, you know, they can contaminate the air and those are greenhouse gases that contribute to climate change as well. Okay, so um, how does your recycling work? Well, at home, uh, you're all very familiar with rolling out your uh, recycling can or dragging it to the curb. And then either your municipality or the waste um, hauler for your town comes and picks up the materials from your curbside recycling. And then all of that comes to our recycling center at the uh, Northern Recycling Center in Lakewood. And at that point, uh, all of the items are sorted out, uh, separated for the type of material it is. And uh, the good uh, materials uh, are basically baled into large bales. And then after the materials are sorted, uh, the operator then markets those materials. They basically go all around this country, all around the world. Um, unfortunately, one of the biggest jobs that um, we have is sorting out the materials that don't belong in curbside recycling, such as bowling balls, garden hoses, and all sorts of crazy things. Now, for businesses, for the commercial entities, um, you have most likely a dumpster in the back of your uh, building. And that is, you, you contract with a hauler, be it Waste Management, Tri-State, Republic, these are just some big names. Uh, they come and pick it up. Uh, they also will bring it to Recycling Center. And the same thing will happen there. We will sort out the good materials and those will get uh, marketed and the bad materials will get pulled out. And that's very time consuming. Uh, it takes uh, not only the um, robotic uh, systems that we have in place at the recycling center, but it does actually take uh, human uh, labor to sort out some materials. And one really important thing to um, see here is no matter who you hire, no matter if your dumpster is from Tri-State, from Republic, or um, any other company, mm -hmm. all recycling in Ocean County comes to our recycling centers, and that's why everybody should follow our guidelines. Because that's very confusing. Sometimes you hire a dumpster, and they have a sticker with a different um, guideline than ours. And I get it. People are going to get confused. But you should always remember that they come to us. so. That's why you need to follow our recycling guide. Oh, and all of those materials that uh, cannot be recycled, we call that residue. After that's all sorted out, that gets shipped back to the landfill. So more time and money spent. All right, so these are the mandated recycling materials in New Jersey. And these are, well, the sticker you can see is from Ocean County. Uh, and these are the materials that we received at our facility. So this is just the beginning of the list. Uh, it's a long list, but these are the things that you might be using day to day. So we recycle plastic, but only bottles, jars, and jugs, or things with the neck smaller than the body. So if you have anything plastic that is not a bottle, a jar, or a jug, then you can throw it in recycling. Uh, and that's one of the biggest misconceptions, mm -hmm. everybody is, is it something plastic and like even, you know, maybe something like this, yeah, it look, it's plastic and it looks valuable, but it's not recycled. So many of the things that we see uh, commonly are plastic clamshells, the types of items that you would find produce in like tomatoes, strawberries, uh, drink cups. Or yogurt containers. Yogurt containers. Um, Those it, are not recyclable. Right, um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, so, I guess we'll just move on to glass. 
So the, the same for glass, bottles and jars, uh, any color, doesn't matter brown, green, or clear. Uh, we do take glass and that gets sorted out. Um, but if we, you have a window, then we yeah. won't take that. No, we don't want any broken glass, no windshields, no windows, um, not the glass that comes out of, say, a picture frame should you drop one. Um, that's, uh, it, it can't be recycled. And the other thing, it's also very dangerous for waste haulers. Uh, they can cut themselves. Um, many uh, become injured very easily from broken glass, syringes, things that don't belong in the garbage, I mean, in the recycling. And then for metal cans, uh, any aluminum or tin cans are accepted in your single stream recycling. Uh, just remember if it's something hazardous, um, I have some examples. Oh, here we go. Um, so if you have spray paint or, you know, like motor uh, car automotive products, then those won't go in your recycling can. But if you have um, spray cooking oil, the other end, or any of those that are safe and you use for cooking or in your body, then if they are absolutely empty, then you could throw them in recycling. Uh, paint cans are not recyclable curbside, but you can bring them to the recycling center or a different program. Um, but just think about that. If you're gonna put that in your single stream dumpster, it's just gonna have to be something that you use in your body or for cooking, something safe. Uh, then cardboard is a big item. I'm sure if you have a business, you pretty much have tons of cardboard. Uh, just remember, never tie it, never bundle it. We just need, need to loose and dry and clean. And when we talk about cardboard, what we're talking about is corrugated cardboard, the type that you see a waffle pattern uh, between the two outer layers. And that would be things like shipping boxes, like Amazon, um, items like that. A lot of people, we, co well, we commonly see uh, cereal boxes, pasta boxes, tissue boxes. Those are not actual cardboard. They're actually known as chipboard. Um, and the other thing is paperboard. Uh, if you have maybe microwave dinners, uh, food boxes, things like that, those also are not cardboard and they would go in your trash. And the reason why is because if you look at it real close, you're going to see the little fibers. If you um, check a tissue box or something like that, it was recycled many times and that was the end of the line. So the fibers are super short and it cannot be recycled again. So if, if you told me if I rather using that kind of paper against plastic, I'm always going to go for the paper because it's a natural material and it will um, decompose if you compost it and it's definitely better than plastic, but it's not recyclable in ocean kind for that reason. And then little things like caps, lids and pumps, they are so small, they're just going to go through the equipment and they are never going to make it to the end of the line to get recycled. So we just recommend um, just to put them apart and if you have a special event or a special program where you can get rid of them, do that. If not, they just go in the garbage. Oh, and the other thing, uh, plastic bags. Uh, plastic bags are one of the biggest problems in recycling centers. What happens is people will put their recyclables in a plastic bag, then put it in their recycling can because they think they're keeping it neat and tidy. But what happens is that plastic bag, all those plastic bags end up uh, getting in the equipment at the recycling center. And we lose about uh, 10 man hours every week, just shutting down the equipment so that workers can go in and physically hand cut out the uh, plastic bags that get wrapped in the gears. And the other thing is shredded paper. Uh, shredded paper, we have, uh, for residents, we have a drop-off location at both our Northern and Southern Recycling Center. Uh, it does not go in your recycling can. What happens when uh, a bag full of shredded paper gets into our recycling center is it becomes like confetti, it explodes everywhere and gets everywhere, it gets wet, it sticks to stuff. So if your intention was to recycle it, it's not gonna get recycled. Uh, so if you wanna drop it off or you wanna use it for something differently, uh, different, that's fine, but just don't put that in recycling. Mm -hmm. And things like styrofoam, we don't have a way to recycle that. Uh, any other plastic containers and things like books, you can bring them to the recycling center, but don't put them on the bin in the bin because they are so thick that they're just going to jam the equipment. And then plastic bags can be taken or any type of plastic film, whether it's plastic bags, um, the, the bubble wrap, the, uh, the pillows, 
and the dry cleaner bags. Those can go to a local retailer, such as a, you know, say a Target, Kohl's, your, your supermarket. Um, those will get recycled. Uh, they actually end up becoming uh, Trex decking. They use the plastic and, for that. Yeah, we'll show that uh, in a little bit. And because you're a business, you can also sign up to collect these materials and send them to that company. Uh, some other mandated items are uh, ferrous and non ferrous scrap, electronic waste. I'm sure if you're uh, getting new equipment, you're going to have a lot of this. Appliances, auto batteries, motor oil, tires. Um, so it depends on the kind of business you run. Um, you're going to have a lot of these types of waste. Uh, then some other items like concrete, cement blocks, bricks, asphalt, stumps, tree trunks, and brush. Those are all mandated to be recycled. And while we don't take these at our recycling center, there are other private recycling centers that do take these items. And if you ever need help finding information, we can always send you a list of the vendors. Right. And uh, then with the metal also, scrap metal dealers, that's another yeah. option. There's plenty of those. Uh, so your responsibilities as a business, you're, yeah, as a business, uh, you're required to provide a report of material recycled from January to December to uh, your township and the county, if you can copy us, that, that'll be great. Uh, so just make sure every time you hire a company, uh, make sure they know this and they give you a report or they send us the report. So that's why you always need to hire someone reputable that you know is a good business and they know what they're doing and they are actually going to deal with your materials properly. Um, and this report, we need it before March of every year, March 15. Um, and some towns send a letter. I know Tom's River does, so you probably already knew this. Right. But it also, by sending in that report, the more um, materials that are being recycled, the more money your township is going to receive back. And Tom's River gets a good amount of money yes. because you do an amazing um, job at recycling. And this money is absolutely necessary for improving your operations and they also buy equipment for the township to give a better service to their residents. Um, now, <laughs> yeah, now we're, we're gonna talk about the cost of recycling because uh, a lot of businesses don't wanna pay for two fees and we get it, um, you know, it's money every single month. So we call three different companies just to give you an example. Uh, the trash dumpster is always more expensive than the recycling dumpster. And if you get to recycle more and create less garbage, you're going to see, you know, a good turnout and you're going to get your money back in, in some time. So just for example, the dumpster for uh, waste management is 176 for garbage, but you're going to save like $50 a month um, if you get a recycling dumpster, you're always going to need a trash disposal um, service, but you can get a smaller one. You don't need such a big container if you're going to recycle. Um, then Tri-State has a great price for cardboard. So if you generate a lot of cardboard, you can get a dumpster for $50 to $75, which is a big difference if you compare it to $176. Mm -hmm. yeah. And their price for garbage is up to $200. So a quarter of the price definitely is worth um, recycling. And then Republic, uh, they, they have the same pricing for both. Um, so they don't really make much of a difference to incentivate people to recycle. Mm -hmm. So some of the uh, free uh, county programs, uh, commercial programs that are available to businesses. Uh, we do live in a short community. So we have a lot of marinas, a lot of boat owners. Uh, boat shrink wrap, which has become very popular over the last, I want to say, decade or two, um, that creates a huge amount of plastic, and a lot of it ends up in dumpsters going to the garbage, okay? This can be recycled. So we do have uh, locations at our northern and southern recycling center where uh, boat shrink wrap can be dropped off. And also many towns have this available. Uh, we have the list in our recycling center, but especially uh, shore communities have this available to, uh, to businesses. 
Um, also, cardboard is accepted. Uh, we do take leaves and brush. And one of the things is if you ever run any special events or if you own a marina, um, the igloos, the big green igloos that you see, the county will drop those off. I know uh, in Island Heights, we have Sail Fest, which is with the Toms River Rotary. And on a regular basis, we are providing those for that event uh, and many other large events around the county. And think about it, if you have a marina and you have all of that boat shrink wrap and you're paying a dumpster, that's going to be very expensive. But if you find transportation, you can just bring it and dispose of it for free and it's going to get recycled. So it's a win-win. Uh, also for the cardboard dumpster, if you don't want to hire a dumpster, you can just bring the material to us as well. So these are options that will save you money if you have the transportation to bring it to us and you know we'll get recycled. And yeah, the igloos will save you a lot of money because then you don't need a dumpster for that um, bottles and cans. And you can also dispose of so many other things for free like electronic waste. So many companies, they won't charge you, uh, but they won't pay you either. But at least you can get rid of that electronic waste and make sure it's recycle and not spend a penny. Uh, cartridges and toners, usually they come with a prepaid label every time you buy a new one. So you can just send them, send them for free to the company or you can go to places like Staples or um, Target, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the only two that have. Yeah, they uh, will, will take uh, cartridges and toners. Uh, yeah. Usually, well, they take the smaller cartridges. They don't take the larger toners. So if you have a large copier, printer, fax scanner, uh, that's not something they're going to take. That's probably going to go back uh, to the company that um, many of you probably lease your copiers from. Uh, it's very expensive to own them. So you probably are dealing with someone like Copiers Plus, someone like that. Check with them to see if they recycle it. Or every time you buy it, um, a toner, it comes with a prepaid label. So you can just put the old one back in that box, put the label and that's it. Or better yet, consider going paperless for as much as you can with your business. In the long run, it will save you money on ink, toner, paper. Um, so that's a great way to save uh, resources right there. And now batteries. Batteries. Oh, no, batteries. Um, so rechargeable batteries, uh, those are accepted. Um, we accept auto batteries. Boat batteries, rechargeable button batteries like our, that you see in hearing aids. And the other thing is uh, many times uh, auto dealers, no, not auto dealers, but Pet Boys, Advance Auto, Auto Parts, those places will take back batteries from you. Uh, the big thing we want to make everyone aware of is the proper handling of lithium ion batteries. You probably heard a lot about uh, fires being sparked by these batteries. They're the ones that power our laptops and many other electronics. They're very powerful, but they also are um, they can catch on fire very easily. The operator of our recycling center, they have another, they had another recycling center in Passaic. Uh, you may have seen the news in uh, January. That burnt to the ground and that was simply just a battery in a vape pen and it took down the whole recycling center. So just don't throw them in your you know, dumpster with anything else, uh, with everything else. Uh, but also a very convenient location at Home Depot mm -hmm. and Lowe's. You can bring your rechargeable batteries and they have a bin. You can leave them there and just get rid of them. And then the alkaline batteries, the, the ones that you typically see, the A, AA, AAA, AAA. you know, Cs, Ds, those um, no longer are recycled. Those can actually go in the trash. Well, they used to be toxic, the components, mm -hmm. uh, but they change and they rearrange everything. So now they are safe to be thrown in the garbage. If you don't like that, um, I don't like to say throw things in the garbage. Uh, you can actually purchase a box from this company called to recycle and they will recycle them. But it is like $60 for 50 pounds. So if that's something you're very passionate about and you really don't want to throw them in the garbage. That's something you can do too. Uh, and then styrofoam, if you have a lot of styrofoam, this is not heavy, but it takes a lot of space in your dumpster. Uh, there is a company called Foam Pack, and they are located in Springfield, New Jersey, and they will take your styrofoam, your block styrofoam. So they won't take anything contaminated with food or any uh, plates or anything like that, but they would take the block. 
which is the bigger one uh, that comes with appliances and some other things. So if you have a lot of it, you can just drive that and drop it off. Uh, they take it for, from commercial entities and institutions too, and municipalities. So this is a free and a good way to get rid of a lot of waste. And then you can find private programs for smaller items. Um, TerraCycle is a company and they're from New Jersey, which is beautiful. Uh, and they have so many programs. I don't know if they have a hundred, but it, it looks like they have like a hundred programs. Uh, they have a lot of free ones and some others you have to pay, but the free ones are amazing because you can take everything um, you see here and more. Um, everyday items you can recycle. They give you a shipping label, you send it for free and they give you points. And those points, you can turn them into money and donate them to charity, uh, a school or an organization. So it's a good way to um, get rid of materials, divert them from your dumpster into something good. And it's also many times um, customers are looking more and more at the companies that they're dealing with and they want to know that they're dealing with companies that, you know, are socially responsible or recycling responsible and care about the environment. So it's it's a good thing for the environment, but it's also good for your uh, reputation as a company. And you don't if you don't have a restaurant or you don't provide a solo cups all the time, maybe at an event, you can just you know, at the after the event, just put the solar cups in a box and, and chip it. It really doesn't take that much extra effort and time and you're doing something good. And that's something you can also promote in your social media, how you're being eco-conscious. And uh, now that's the ticket, I believe, to success because um, that's where all the businesses are going. Yes, sustainability is the big word right now in business. So uh, recycling programs that pay back. Metal scrap, uh, that's one of the items that uh, you can get money for. Um, typically now seven cents per pound, uh, the amount of money that you get back uh, changes, it fluctuates with the markets, but we just tried to give you a little idea there. Um, there are many companies in Ocean County that will handle metal scrap. Uh, sometimes if you have appliances, they will take those. It only gets a little dicey if we're dealing with uh, Freon. Uh, some places will remove the Freon and take the metal, others won't. So that's something uh, that you can uh, look into. But if you have a business that deals mm -hmm. with a lot of scrap, yeah. they will give you a free container and they will pay you for mm -hmm. your material. So this is great. Depends on the kind of business you run again. Uh, but if you don't have a lot, you can or get the money if you drop it off or they can pick it up, but they won't pay you. So. Yeah. And, and some will pay a little bit more um, in doing some research for an individual who had a question about getting rid of a motorized wheelchair scooter. Uh, I did speak to an auto place in New Egypt and they were actually paying like 18 to 20 cents either on the metal or, you know, the batteries that power it. And these are just some examples mm -hmm. of local places that would take your scrap metal. Um, so many around here, so there's no reason to not do it. It just saves space and uh, gives you money back. I'll let you talk about the cooking right. oil. <laughs> so the, um, this is very important for restaurants mostly because you have to recycle your cooking oil and you usually get money back, which is great. We have three companies that um, are the most popular around here. Mopac, Green Earth, Biodiesel, and Dark Pro Solutions. Uh, Green Earth is actually based in Tom's River. So that's beautiful because it's a local business and they give you a free container and they pick up for free as well. So if you have a business that um, handles cooking oil or you know someone that does that, um, this is a great way to comply and get some money back too. And of course, you all know, if you are in the restaurant business, whatever you do, do not pour it down the drain. We can attest to the fact that it does not work very well. And in fact, our office was inundated with a flood when the cafeteria spent too much time pouring grease down the drain. So it was not pretty here. Which is office. ironic. Yeah, because, because we're, we're recycling, <laughs> but we nearly drowned in greasy uh, water. <laughs> um. So this was one of the other programs that we talked about before. Plastic bags are um, a big no-no for recycling, but this company, which you've probably seen before because they do decking, um, they recycle number two and number four film. 
Um, so every time you go to the grocery store, I don't know if you do this already and you bring your plastic bags, they sell it to Trex and that's how it gets recycled. So if you are a big business and you want to start collecting or you just have a lot of wrapping, um, for example, I've seen the Sherwin Williams, they get all of their paints like wrapped in plastic. So you're not collecting, but you have a lot of plastic for different reasons. You can um, bail it and send it to Trex and they deal with any kind of business and they will give you their you know pricing how much they pay back um i guess it depends on the situation but this is a way a good way to do it and if you don't want to go through the hassle of bailing it and sending them sending it somewhere you can just partner up with maybe a supermarket that is already doing it um and just get rid of all of that film instead of throwing it in the garbage Okay, so um, to make this cost effective, really it comes down to the bottom line and, and money. And a lot of people think it's more, it takes more time, it takes more money to recycle. But really, if you are recycling, it's going to save you more money because when items go to the landfill, you get charged. Uh, there's such a thing as a, a tipping fee. So right now, currently, we have relatively low tipping fees in Ocean County. Ours are at $75 a ton, but that's $75 that you don't have to pay if you are recycling properly. And if you get up into the Northern counties, you're gonna run into fees more around 100 and 120. So whatever you can do to reduce or to reuse and recycle within your uh, offices, your restaurants or your businesses, it's, it's gonna help your bottom line. And also your customers are going to appreciate that because as we said, customers are more aware of uh, the social responsibility uh, for businesses and doing the right thing. So some things you can do to reduce your waste is go paperless, um, do electronic outreach. I don't know if you like junk mail, I really do not appreciate it. So I am really happy when you can just sign up for things to, you know, just get it on your email and ads online are more efficient nowadays as well. You try to use less plastic. So if you can choose something that is made out of paper or any other material that could be recycled, uh, try to avoid the plastic. Then reduce your packaging waste. Um, I don't know if you, if you sell something and you think that it looks really nice with the plastic bag and the ribbon or something, maybe there is another way that you can make it look even nicer and you don't need to buy all of these items to create more waste. You can also try to go natural and use non-hazardous cleaning products in your office is going to improve your um, workers' health. Is going to make the place, you know, clean and safe for everyone. Um, it's going to lower allergies and all of these things. And then you don't have to worry about disposing of hazardous cleaning products. And just another thing to talk about uh, businesses, many businesses, especially offices and stuff, you have a cleaning crew uh, that comes in and cleans your offices. And this is something that I discovered working in an office. We were recycling, we were putting our paper and other items in the recycling can, we were putting our garbage in our garbage can, but then the cleaners came at night and proceeded to go through and dump all of the bins into one bag and dump it all into the uh, trash dumpster. So um, if you're ever in your office later when the cleaning crew comes in, kind of keep an eye out and see if all of your recycling efforts are being undone uh, after hours when the cleaning crew comes in. Yeah. And um, try to reuse as much as possible. If you need equipment and there is a way to buy used equipment that works as great as a new one, then do so or lease the equipment. Um, you can also set up a swap area for office supplies. Um, I mean, we have a huge collection of yeah. office supplies that we no <laughs> longer use because we don't use as much paper as we once used. So binder clips, paper clips, all these things are starting to build up in our cabinets right now. Yeah, instead of, you know, maybe one side of the office ran out of the paper clips and then they're buying. Well, if you have a um, main place to put all of these supplies, then everybody can just use as they need and uh, reduce the purchasing of these items. 
You can also try to choose reusable items instead of single use. For example, if your office likes to buy um, coffee, paper coffee cups, maybe just get everyone a reusable mug that looks really nice with your logo and you're gonna save a lot of money because you're not gonna be buying all of this and then you're not gonna have all of that garbage. Another example is the, I mean, I don't have anything against the security cups, but they are pretty wasteful. Mm. Uh, you can make better coffee using, you know, the old school percolators or just a coffee maker with the filters. And real coffee. And real coffee. <laughs> and real coffee. So, and the other thing that's great about the reusable mug and, and stuff, as Tanara said, is you get to put your logo, put your brand on it. If you have a bunch of throwaway disposable items, nobody's going to remember your red solo cup, but they will remember your mug or your cup that had your name and logo on it. And as an office, it'll be nice to have we just got that request from a coworker. Mm -hmm. that'll be nice to have reusable mugs with our logo there. Um, also, if you have marketing materials that you're printing out, just avoid dating them because just think about 2020. If you bought a planner for 2020, that's the worst money you ever <laughs> spent. Worst investment. Because you couldn't plan anything. Uh, so it was a waste of money and all of those planners are just being thrown in the garbage. Because um, I don't think everybody was just writing you know, be in my pajamas all day and you know. another Zoom meeting. <laughs> yeah. Another Zoom, Zoom, Zoom meeting. Zoom. Zoom, Zoom. <laughs> um, so if you have something you can use for a long time, then that's great. So you don't have to be reprinting or just throwing it out because it has a date on. Uh, and oh, it's another great thing are the reusable bags. In fact, ours just came in. There are several boxes sitting out in the front office, and I know the secretary is going to have my head for it. So, <laughs> but uh, the reusable bags are are great. Uh, you can put your name on it. Uh, people enjoy these. Not every reusable tote has to be a big, huge bag. Many of us have that tote full of totes riding around in the back of their car. We get out of our car, we forget to bring them with us, and then we have to go back and get them. Uh, there are many items that uh, the bags are small, they're foldable. Uh, it's also, you know, usually women end up with these because it's like, oh, the woman does the shopping. But uh, with the small foldable bags, one of the nice things is you can stick it in your back pocket. If you're a guy, some of them come with carabiners. So that's a, a nice item to give away. And for reasons that we'll talk about later, it's probably going to be an item that you want to put on your list if you do a lot with uh, plastic bags. But if you don't want to purchase bags because everybody's doing the bags and you think yeah. that's not something you want to do, you can do something as simple as just posting a sign outside of your shop. Don't forget to bring your bags. So how many of us did all the grocery shopping and were in the cashier and we forgot our bags? That's just so upsetting. If we had a sign out there, no one would be forgetting these bags because as soon as you walk in the door, you'll be like, oh, I got to go back, get the bags and come, come back. And think about places like Costco and BJ's. People are not stopping, you know, going to BJ's and Costco because you don't get bags. You get your groceries and you go grab one of the uh, cardboard boxes that's left from whatever was shipped to them and you put your stuff in it and you take it home and they've seen no decrease in business. So plastic bags are not essential to survival in the business world. Yeah. So you're going to save money and, you know, just reminding someone to bring their bags. So um, another thing to consider is donating. There's many uh, worthy uh, places that you can donate to. Habitat for Humanity is one. Uh, they take furniture items. They will pick up for free so long as you have two, a minimum of two items. Uh, also, office supplies can be donated. Uh, think about donating to other smaller businesses. Uh, also, you know, SBA, Small Business Association. Perhaps there are people who are just starting up a business and need a little help and you don't need those items anymore. Or you can use them for, you know, donate them to local schools. Um, some of the other places are Free Cycle, uh, Goodwill. Uh, Craigslist, um, marketplace, marketplace Facebook. Yeah, and you and if you use Habitat for Humanity, they will give you a ticket so you can claim it with your taxes too. So that's that's a great way because they are a great organization, and they are right in Tom's River too. Mm -hmm. And just make sure you recycle right, because if um if you put items that do not belong there, as you learned before, uh, they are just going to end up in the garbage. So it's, they're just going to make a long trip, but it's going to be more expensive for everyone uh, to end up in the landfill. Uh, 
make sure your materials are clean because you don't want to contaminate other materials. So if you have a tuna can with all the oil and you put it with your paper, that paper is just going to be worthless because you can't even recycle that anymore. Also, make sure you take advantage of every free recycling program you can. And if you don't want to do it yourself, you can partner up with another organization. Tom's River has a um, sustainability team. Um, they are volunteers from the town, but you also have a lot of nonprofits. You have uh, say Barnegat Bay, you have the Barnegat Bay Partnership and so many other volunteer programs that will be happy, I'm pretty sure, to do business with you and, and try to help you out with this. And just never, never, never buy your recyclables because you're not doing anything um, good for for anything. I mean, it's gonna look neat for a little bit, but you can just put them in the back and then dump them loose and reuse that back. So just don't send us your bags. Right, by the time it hits um, the recycling truck and then hits our tipping floor, trust me, nothing looks very neat. And I don't know, you probably mentioned it in the beginning, but what we're, we're about landfills, we're trying to save space yeah. and prolong the life of the landfill as long as possible. So we've got until maybe 2038. The other thing is we have one whole cell that's devoted to nothing but Sandy, the after effects of Hurricane Sandy. So not a lot of room left. Mm -hmm. Ah, food waste. Yes. This is uh, one of Tanara and I's, especially my favorite. <laughs> uh, we have a wonderful program called the Master Composter Program. Uh, volunteer programs are great to become involved with, especially if you are a local business person. It gets you out. It gets you to meet people. Uh, it broadens your sphere of influence, as we like to call it, your SOI. So this is something um, I'm always uh, recruiting people to become master composters. It's a wonderful group of people. Uh, they're all residents of Ocean County. Uh, we train them how to compost. And then we work many events, everything from the Island Beach State Park, Beach Plum Festival, Caddis Island, uh, Ocean Days. We are at many Earth Day events, and it's a great opportunity to meet a lot of people and network with other businesses, be it restaurants, uh, any, any type of business you can think of. Uh, they are at these events. Uh, and one of the things is, as crazy as it sounds, you can implement a composting program in your office. Um, I did it here as a project. I actually had a, a worm bin in my cubicle. I know that's a bit extreme. You probably don't want to jump in with that. But think about composting at home because 25 to 35% of your household waste is organic in nature. And when it gets to the landfill, the only thing it does is sit there in that closed, sealed uh, cell and forever. forever. Think of the, a landfill as a cemetery for your um, food and garbage. Um, so uh, there, are, um, there are a few private uh, collection services that will uh, pick up organics. Uh, I know some of the grocery stores do this. And then the other thing is think about, um, if possible, donate food to your local food pantries or homeless shelters, um, such as Code Blue, and many of the local churches. It's a great place. Many of them run food pantries, and it, it's a great way to see that um, a resource, a very valuable resource, uh, does not get wasted. So many people go hungry. Yeah, one beautiful thing I saw uh, was a couple of years ago in France, they made it mandatory for every business to donate the leftover food instead of throwing it in the dumpster. And I think that's so amazing because a lot of people really need some help. And if you have food that is still good, but you just didn't sell it by the end of the day, uh, just crazy to me to just throw it in the garbage. So you can compost it or just donate. Mm -hmm. uh, coffee grounds. So um, some of the... Uh, composting programs uh, that are more big name. Um, there's a lot of coffee ground recycling programs in, in certain stores. They've been around since at least 2017. So 10,000 coffee grounds diverted. Uh, coffee grounds are an excellent resource. Um, and hey, if you don't want to get into composting, go out, dump it on your hydrangeas, feed it to your roses or your plants. They will do very well. Um, Wawa is another store uh, that has a program. And I think in New Jersey, you cannot, 29 yeah, 29 stores. stores. 
uh, you can't drive around New Jersey and not find a Wawa. There's probably one every so many miles. It wouldn't be New Jersey. We <laughs> but certainly think about just dumping it in your backyard on your plants. It's a wonderful resource. Uh, my mother, you know, banana peels and coffee grounds and her plants do amazing. And maybe just one item, just, you know, coffee grounds. It, it sounds like a little, a little project, but it makes a difference. So if you cannot compost everything, Maybe just do coffee grounds and, mm -hmm. and see how that goes. And Starbucks is another big one. Yeah. Um, so benefits of recycling for business, just to wrap it up, you're going to produce less garbage. So you're going to need a smaller dumpster. You're going to pay less. You're going to reduce and you're going to reuse. And that's going to also save you uh -huh. money. You're going to get recognition. Uh, you can get free advertisement from many uh, apps and, and websites. Uh, for example, Survivor Foundation has a program for restaurants. And there are so many other apps um, that you can sign up and put your business there and they will advertise for free. Um, more customers and that's gonna give you increase in money because you're gonna sell more. Um, do we have the back end coming Yeah, so um, if you choose to reuse, um, you're just gonna, this is just an example, you're gonna recycle more, you're gonna use one item instead of tons of them. Um, things can look beautiful and Instagram ready and people could be, you know, just taking pictures of your business for Instagram and that's going to save you money and it's going to save you time. And if you choose biodegradable materials, you can compose them and that's just going to go from your business to the garden instead of the landfill. Consider your landscaping choices. If you have a, an office or a building where you do have landscaping, you know, think about how you can reduce the impact on the environment, uh, use less uh, dangerous pesticides and chemicals. And we have a garden uh, in Lakewood, uh, out at our recycling center. So if you ever want to see what composting looks like, we can, you know, give you a tour and you'll see it doesn't smell what the recycling center is going to smell. The recycling but not the center compost and all smells, <laughs> yeah. but the compost doesn't. So if you have a garden, in, you know, outside of your building, you can totally do it and no one would ever notice. So just think about it. Everything you buy or sell needs to be disposed of somewhere. So we just want to do the best to make a circular economy instead of a linear economy where everything is going to end up in the landfill, uh, in an incinerator, or worse. Overseas and in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So these are some green programs and recognition uh, programs that you can sign up for. You can become a sustainable uh, business and sign up for the registry and that's free. Uh, you can, if you have a beauty salon, you mm -hmm. can be part of the green circle salons and they have beautiful programs for items that, uh, you know, I don't even uh, know there is another choice to get rid of. They will recycle even the foil that you use for um, the hair dyeing and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, you can become an ocean friendly restaurant with the Survivor Foundation and you can certify yourself as a, a big corporation too. So uh, recycling and the communities. So better recycling means that your towns are going to get more funding. Um, people are starting to prefer businesses that align with their values. So that's another important thing uh, when you're in a business. And being at a shore community, people really think a lot about the beach, the, the rivers, the ocean, uh, the Barnegat Bay estuary. This is very important, people, whether you're a boater or not. Uh, this is where people live and visit. If you're in the tourist industry, you know, we sometimes get a little possessive and feel funny when the, you know, the bennies come in and we want them to respect our area as much as we do. Um, so that's important. It, one thing is, um, Tons River is certified with Sustainable Jersey as a green community. And that's something beautiful that you can incorporate in your business or even try to work with them in some project. Uh, for example, well, we both live in Island Heights and we're also certified. And sometimes we do a toy collection, a used toy collection. So for Christmas and for Earth Day, we partner up with some businesses and this organization that will match you up with an organization in need. So for example, Bobby's Vinery, downtown Town River, they will collect used toys mm -hmm. with us. And then, um, you know, something, nice because they get more customers and more people you know in their um cafe 
but they also do something beautiful for the environment and for the community because so many children are in need of um, these items and some parents can afford them. So we then donate them to the LEAP program, to the Head Started. So it's nice and it gives you good marketing. It's great PR. Oh, and this is another example. Uh, our green team partnered up with um, the health food store in, on 37. They were taking plastic bags with us. And when we got 500 pounds, Trex donated this beautiful bench that is usually $600. So that's something you can do with a Girl Scout troop or a school or many others. So you don't have to, you know, build the material or anything, but you can just tell them, yeah, you can bring it here and then we'll give it to the school. Um, oh, common mistakes. So uh, this is what we see, especially with um, apartment buildings and condos, things like that. Uh, a lot of them are property maintenance groups or property management companies, and they're out of county. They can even be out of state. So we went to one large um, apartment complex and what's the five minutes? Oh, and they had information uh, about recycling in Burlington County when obviously we are in Ocean County. So it's important that you make sure you have the right information. Um, also, some of the really crazy things that we get in, people want to recycle everything. Uh, the, the chainsaw that actually came through, cut our, uh, our belt. We were down for probably a week and it probably cost us at least 10,000. So just because it's metal, don't throw it in the recycling bin. Uh, and then the other, yeah, that's the hazardous items that we don't want to put in there. Yeah. Or they, um, I saw that the movie theater, they had a different recycling guide, mm -hmm. um, telling you to put these things in recycling. It does not our, uh, recycling guide. Uh, so don't go by a standard if you are part of a um, chain so this is very important um uh, some of you may be already aware of this but uh new jersey has signed into law the plastic bag ban it is being uh it's going yeah may 2022 it goes into effect and there's a list of items that will no longer be available. Uh, the single-use plastic bags, the single-use paper bags, there are many exemptions, as you can see. Also, uh, many of the disposable foam items uh, are also going to be banned. There are some that will have an extra two-year grace period. So this is certainly, if you are a business that deals with this type of materials that you use on a regular basis or give out to your customers, uh, it is really time to take a look at getting reusable items to replace these with. And do you want to hop on that a little bit more? Or? Oh, and this, so this is just an example of what happens to plastic bags when they get to our recycling center. So it's like when you have a vacuum and um, the rollers are just full of hair or something, if you have a dog, um, that's the same uh, effect. So we don't really want your the plastic bags there and there's a different place to put them. So we just want to encourage people to do that. And the plastic bag ban is definitely going to help us um, with that and some other examples or plastic bags and that they can just fly out of your can and just go into nature and that's not good yeah we we spend a lot of time picking plastic bags out of our demonstration garden that blow in so and uh free resources you can always go to our website and we have um information there uh posters and things like that that you can use uh if you need help with something different or you have a project let us know we will always help we can also help you design um maybe some signs that are gonna be related to recycling or those kind of things so just uh, send us an email and these are some examples of signage that we created before you can customize it or if you need just to double check that you have the right information it's all in there and we have translations in Spanish, Yiddish, um, and Portuguese, I think, as well. And some other information resources. So we have many websites, many institutions in New Jersey and the United States. And that's it. I think we made it, right? <laughs> you did. Oh my gosh, what amazing information. I had no oh, idea. Thank so thank you so much for informing us and our members. Um, does anybody have any questions? for our presenters.
It was such great information. You guys were so thorough, honestly. Oh, thank um, you. Hopefully it wasn't a lot. I know it gets a little overwhelming. It's a lot <laughs> of information. It is a lot of information, but it's very important. And, and like you said, being a shore community, um, it's essential for us to make sure that we keep our environment and our, you know, our ocean clean. Um, but it was really, really informative. So thank you very much. And what I'll do is if anybody has additional questions and you want to follow up, I please feel free to email me and I will get you in touch with Sandra and Tanara. And, um, oh, wait, we have one question. What if the private hauler finds you for items they say are not accepted? Um, all right, this could, this happens if you get a dumpster and you put paint cans, I believe, sometimes they will um, give you a fine or and they just will charge you more. Yeah, they'll try, yeah and, and there was a point in time where we were getting so much contamination that loads were being rejected at our recycling plant. We hated to do it, but there were some towns, some of the stuff that was coming in was so, so bad. Uh, so we cannot control the hauler giving you mm -hmm. fines or not giving you fines. Um, because that's their private business, they're just transporting it. But if they do it, it might be because we are rejecting their loads and then they have to pay for a landfill disposal. Okay. Yeah, and if you, um, well, no, because that would be, yeah. yeah that's fun, the commercial, it's, yeah. Can they find? I mean, the hauler, yeah, the hauler can, can they... probably pass costs on to you. I, would, I don't know that I would call it a fine because fine is kind of like more of an official yeah, governmental. Uh, so another question, can they find if items are acceptable by Ocean County? Well, if you have a single stream uh, container, you're gonna just put there your bottles, your cans, your paper, your cardboard, and that's it. If you put something else, um, we get recyclables from 650,000 people in Ocean County. So we're not able to separate like uh, a paint can. We're not going to be able to separate it before it's dumped into the tipping floor, which is a huge amount of recyclables that then we have to sort. Um, so they will probably find you because we're not even letting them drop the items in our tipping floor. So that will be up to them and just don't mix items from the special waste drop off with a single stream because they go to completely separate buildings and it's a completely uh, separate. This, this sounds like yeah. it might be a question but, to be answered um, in more depth if they right. want to reach like specifics, out. specifics, yes. It sounds like a very um, specific situation. Right, so we, uh, your emails, if you guys wanna put your email real quick in the chat so everyone has it and then Barbara, if you want to um, reach out um, offline with them um, and we can find an answer for you. It sounds like you had um, an, uh, uh, an issue. Um, yeah. Are oh, there that's any? mine. Okay. Quick comment. Mine is too long, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, um, sure, John, what, what, what do you have? Yeah, so I just want to touch on, on real quick, John LeMay from Ocean Tech uh, IT Services Company. So this one jumped out at me. Um, looking at, at recycling of electronic devices, computers, desktops, laptops, mobile devices. Um, you need to be real sensitive about your data. Make sure you log out of, of any accounts with yes. Google or, or Apple. Uh, make sure you, you reset all of those devices according to the manufacturer's instructions. Apple and Google both provide instructions on those. Um, when it comes to laptops and desktops, the hard drives are where all the data is stored. We want to make sure that ideally remove the hard drives and recycle those separately. There are companies that can shred your hard drives mm -hmm. for you. They actually put them through a large shredder to make sure your data can't be taken. Reformatting a hard drive is not as effective as you might think. Um, so you want to pull those out of there before you recycle the rest of the computer. We didn't, we did a... Um... Um, a tour inspection of the facility that takes our recyclables mm -hmm. and our electronic waste. So I can assure you, if you bring your materials to the Ocean County Recycling Center, they will be disposed of securely and properly. Yeah, they yeah. shred them. Yeah. They, yeah, they, they, they drill a hole into mm -hmm. the, what was that, the hard drive? The and hard then they drive. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah. Right. And just make sure you use a certified company and yeah, be very careful if you have a sensitive data. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, John, for that comment. 
Um, and okay, so we put um, the contact information in the chat as well. So please feel free to reach out to them if you have additional questions. And again, thank you guys so much for joining us. It was super informative. I appreciate it. And if we have um, additional opportunities um, for you to get in front of people, I will most certainly reach out as well. So thank you again. Um, everybody enjoy your weekend and um, we'll see you soon. Member Connect, is, Member Connect is tomorrow morning. So if you wanna join us, please feel free. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much.